If you're looking to heal while also killing enemies with the slow and effective touch of poison, look no further than the Plague Doctor. A class defined by her versatile kit, able to heal, kill, hinder, and buff all in one foul swoop. The Plague Doctor is one of the four heroes you'll start your journey on in Darkest Dungeon 2, and is easily one of the heroes players both old and new will come to rely on heavily. In this video, I'll be going through all of her abilities, paths, and trinkets. Then I'll go over some of the places this hero struggles and shrines before delving into some of the most effective ways to play her. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe, it really helps. Make sure to check the timestamps for each section. All right, so as with all the heroes, we're gonna go ahead and cover her abilities first. As of every hero in the game, she has 11 total, five of which you start unlocked with, and the rest of which are unlocked through hero shrines. In this section, we're just gonna cover some of the basics, go over what these abilities do, and we'll cover some more playstyles and more detail tips later on. So the first of her abilities is Noxious Blast. This is kind of her bread and butter, front rank damaging, blight dealing attack. It has fairly low damage, but it does deal a good amount of blight. It also has the ability to pierce through blight resistance when attacking somebody with a combo token. The next ability we have is one of her utility support debuff abilities, and this is Blinding Gas. This allows her to cleave the back row of enemies, hitting both of them while applying blind and also potentially combo, and then when upgraded, it can also apply daze. Next we have Incision, this is her stabbing ability, her bleed ability as well, her only bleed ability. This is one that can be used from the front ranks, which does make it a little different than some of her other abilities. This ability can actually hit for decent damage while also bleeding the target, It again also has the resistance piercing when the target is comboed. Her next ability is probably the one that everybody has clicked at least once in this game if you've played it at all, and that is Battlefield Medicine. This is her primary healing ability. Now, it does require that the target be below 50% health in order to heal. It can heal for a lower amount when unupgraded and obviously a more when upgraded. But the other thing that it does do is remove damage over time on the target. And when upgraded, it will actually remove damage over time on the Plague Doctor herself as well. The next one we have is Ounce of Prevention. This is one of her support abilities. This can hit and target every single person on the party all at once. And what it does is raise everybody's resistance to all the damage over time types, as well as disease resistance. And of course, when upgraded, it increases the amount that it helps resist those bots. Next, we have Plague Grenade. This is one of the other really strong abilities of the Plague Doctor. This is her back row cleave blight attack. It does very little damage, but it does hit the back two ranks and also can apply a decent amount of blight, even when unupgraded upgraded. Emboldening Vapors is the next ability. This is her support ability that allows her to apply strength to one of her party members, as well as applying speed and strength when upgraded, which gives it some pretty unique advantages. Next, we have Disorienting Blast, again, one of her debuffing abilities. It's one of the few abilities in the game that can actually shuffle the enemy around, so it doesn't just push or pull, it actually moves them all over the place. This will also add a daze token and potentially a weakness token, and when upgraded, it has the possibility to apply stun when the target has combo, so it makes it one of the few stun abilities available in the game. The next one we have is Indiscriminate Science. This is a pretty interesting ability. It has a lot of text here, but it is pretty simple once you understand how it works. This is the Plague Doctor's other healing ability, and essentially, if the target is below the threshold to meet this ability's requirements, you can heal them for a base of 10%, and then an additional 10% for every positive token that that person has. This is when the ability is unupgraded. Essentially, this will remove those positive tokens and translate them into heals. And when upgraded, it will also target negative tokens, though those will only heal for 5%, but it will remove all tokens. The next ability we have is a pretty interesting one, and that is Cause of Death. So this has to be used from the front three ranks, which again makes it one of the more unique abilities for the Plague Doctor being a back rank player. Um, and essentially what this does is it will deal the remaining damage over time, all three types, on the target as physical damage and then remove the damage over time. So if they have, say, six Blight on them at that time, it will do, what is that, four Blight and then it will remove the Blight. Uh, this is really good for doing big hits. If you have a lot of Blight, Bleed, Dodge, you just want to get rid of an enemy pretty quickly. Uh, and when upgraded, it will also apply a combo token and do 100% of the remaining damage. This also ignores block as well, which is pretty good to know. 
And finally, the last ability we have in her kit is another interesting one, and that is Magnesium Rain. This is a cleave ability that hits all four enemies at the same time, and it will apply a burn of two or three when upgraded, and it also has the unique ability of removing corpses, making it very interesting in certain areas. All right, so moving on, we're going to go ahead and talk about all of her unique hero trinkets next. So as of all the other heroes, she has three unique trinkets, and these will only appear if you have the Plague Doctor on your team. The first one we're going to talk about is the annotated textbook. This will actually increase the crit chance of her melee skills by 10%. And if she has medicinal herbs equipped, which is a combat item, which she has to have equipped for this to be applied, she will also give an additional 50% healing given. So this does make it pretty unique. Her trinkets are some of the only ones that actually need an interaction with another item in order to work to their full abilities. Now it does also pay to note here that it turns start if you are first in turn order you will also generate a vulnerable token, so you don't want her to be the first one going on your team. The next one is the Early Experiment Trinket. This one is pretty powerful. If a Noxious item is equipped, and Noxious being an item tag, which are the gray text that you'll see below a lot of items, there are combat items and trinkets that both fill this need. So if a Noxious item is equipped, it will increase the amount of Blight dealt by her attacks to plus two. So if she's dealing three Blight, she'll now deal five etc etc this will also change her disorienting blast skill to apply a base of two blight whereas before it wasn't doing that so it just gives it a little bit extra though it is only a 50 percent chance to apply it the other thing that this does do is removes the bleed dealt by her incision skill making it a essentially useless if you're using this trinket so you basically want to be playing her in a blight path here and the next one is a pretty interesting one it is storage room key so when using ounce of prevention it will also have the chance to apply a block token to everybody which is pretty powerful and also when using emboldening vapors it also has a chance to apply regen which is very powerful the other thing to keep in mind here is that battlefield medicine does lose its healing given by 50 percent so you don't want to be relying on battlefield medicine as your primary heal if you're running this trinket all right, so now we've gone ahead and covered all the trinkets. Next, we're going to go ahead and cover the paths, of which she has three of them, which need to be unlocked at the altar like every hero. Of course, she does start with the Wanderer path that every hero has, but she does get her specific ones. So the first one we're going to start off with is Surgeon. Surgeon works by giving her an additional amount of health, making her a bit less squishy. It also increases the damage done by her melee skills, which is pretty much just incision, and also gives her healing skills additional healing given, making her a more potent healer. Now, this does come at the cost of her ability to deal Blight, so you don't want to be running her as a Blight-centric hero. The next one that we have is her Alchemist Path. This is her Blight-centric path, essentially. This does make her a bit squishier by removing 20% of her health, but it does increase the chance for her to apply Blight, which makes it useful in areas like the Fetter, where there's a lot of Blight resistance. This also does give her blight causing skills an additional crit chance which is really good if you want to make sure that those dots last for you know the five rounds that you get with a crit while also dealing damage and also having that stress healing relief factor so pretty useful there and one of the most powerful things i think of this path in particular is the base increase to all of her resistances stun Blight, Bleed, Burn, and Debuff resistances all get increased, which is pretty dang potent. All right, and next we have her Physician Path. This is a pretty interesting one. It removes her ability to deal Bleed and Blight at the benefit of helping her support and debuff abilities. So the first one is Disorienting Blast, which gets an additional 20% chance to its stun ability. Also, do keep in mind that Daze falls under the stun resist category, so it does affect that as well. You also have Ounce of Prevention, which will now increase the stress resist on your team, which is pretty interesting. I think this is the only ability outside of the Virtuoso path on the Jester that can increase stress resist, so very powerful. Next, we have Emboldening Vapors, which now gets an additional strength token on top of it. So you don't just get one, but you get two. So this makes it basically doubly as effective. Very good. And then Disorienting Blast, again, also now has the chance to apply Vulnerable, making it a pretty powerful path. All right, so now we've gone ahead and we've covered all the basics, the abilities, the paths, and the trinkets of the Plague Doctor, but let's talk a little bit about her strengths and her weaknesses. The Plague Doctor's strengths lie mostly within her abilities to keep your team alive, something that especially early on you will need. The obvious strengths lie in her ability to heal your team, having two built-in healing skills to her kit, both of which can remove nasty negative status effects or damage over time. 
These early heals will prove vital to you for your first few runs, and new players especially will rely on them heavily to struggle through hard fights. Of course, she also has a myriad of support abilities, being able to both shuffle, stun, blind, and daze the enemy team. Next, let's not skip over her very beneficial buff, both being able to add strength, speed, increase base resistances at the click of a button. Pretty potent stuff. Though these buffs can sometimes be ignored just for her pure ability to deal out death. The Plague Doctor has one of the more versatile attack sets, being able to hit any rank with Blight and even smack enemies hard with her incision ability. Early on, she's one of the few heroes able to target the pesky backliners, which makes her a pretty good choice for new players, especially considering the fact that she is one of the heroes you get at the beginning. And even after you've unlocked other heroes, she still tends to be one of the most reliable. But with all that said, there's definitely some things that don't work out for her. She has a relatively low health pool, making her a decently squishy target for enemies to focus. Her heals are strong, yes, but you do have limitations applied to them. Battlefield Medicine can easily become a crutch for players who then suddenly realize they're playing a bit too aggressively and they've run out of heals. Indiscriminate Science is amazing when it hits for those massive numbers, but it can also be a nightmare when it peels away all of those hard-earned tokens that you've been working for in one single click. While she does have some good buffs in Ounce of Prevention and Emboldening Vapors, it can tend to be hard to find the right time to hit those buttons when you're also focused on healing or using her for damage. Like, where do you do that? It can become hard for players to balance out her varied kit, suddenly rendering her a bit of a mid-tier hero that's spread too thin using too many different things. She also suffers from the inability to be rank flexible, limiting her mostly to the back two ranks and using some of her more niche abilities forward of that. All that being said then, how should you play the Plague Doctor to make best use of her? Let's go over a few of the ways that I think you can use her to great effect. Now, do take these with a grain of salt, there are many different ways to play these heroes, and these are just my suggestions. So first and foremost, the obvious strategy is to focus the Plague Doctor into her healing skills. Battlefield Medicine is an amazingly useful skill, having a fairly high threshold to reach for getting off those heals. This makes it a pretty reliable button to have equipped at all times, as you can get heals off at a relatively safe health level. It's also very useful to note here that when the skill is upgraded, it will also remove damage over time off the Plague Doctor herself. This makes it very useful for removing pesky damage from one of your more vulnerable heroes, while also being on low health on your Plague Doctor if she's got a damage over time applied to her. Another pro tip is that the ability can be used prior to the health threshold being met. What this will do is remove the damage over time without healing. This can be very nicely used on heroes who have amassed a large amount of damage over time, such as your tank, before their turn goes, rendering it pretty much a moot point. Do make sure to keep in mind it does have limited uses, and it may be a great heal, but it can't be spammed. The next heal is her Indiscriminate Science, which is a much more complex ability. Essentially, it will turn your tokens into healing, allowing for some insane heals if used correctly. When upgraded, it will also convert those negative tokens into healing as well, albeit with a slightly smaller payoff. Still, this ability can be used with heroes who can self-generate a lot of tokens, like the Mana Arms using Retribution or the Highwaymen with Take Aim, to get very large heals. It's also amazing for removing severe negative effects, such as Stun or Blind, so that you can ensure you get the full use out of one of your heroes. Unlike Battlefield Medicine, this ability has no Battlefield limit, just a cooldown. Using these two heals together in tandem and switching them off can ensure the survival of your team for a pretty long time. The Plague Doctor is a brilliant support hero when used correctly. She has easily one of the strongest buttons in her kit for helping your team through a myriad of difficult fights, and that's Ounce of Prevention. This ability does get overlooked a lot, and understandably so. It doesn't really seem that glamorous, yet when you have this upgraded, it can be used to help your team ignore just most any damage over time attacks from enemies. And it also helps with diseases too, which are some of the most irritating things in the game. A 25% boost to your resist doesn't seem that much, but considering that damage over times are the number one cause of death for most heroes on death's door, this ability is legitimately a lifesaver. This can be used with some trinket combos to make your frontliners basically immune to damage over time. Hold on to those specialized dot trinkets and use this ability to trivialize certain enemies and certain areas. The Harvest Child can suddenly become a breeze when it's not landing any bleed or blight, and you're removing the hunger with indiscriminate science, which, fun fact, you can do by the way. Or just make the big blights from the exemplar bounce off your tank, never to be heard from again. 
seriously, it's a very good skill. The next one we have is another one of our underutilized skills, and that's Emboldening Vapor. Unupgraded, I won't lie, it's a bit tame, just giving a strength token, but where it shines is with the speed given when upgraded. Suddenly, this ability can be used on the Leopard to prime him for that first smackdown on the next round, or maybe you can use it on a Highwayman with Snappy Swig so he can generate a crit token and blow the front rank into dust. Speed is a very powerful token, and use it wisely. Especially when you're using the Physician Path, this ability becomes really strong with that double strength. Make sure you're using it. So next we're going to cover some of her debuff abilities and how to use them. Her debuff abilities are some of the best in the game, honestly. Blinding Gas works really well in tandem with Plague Grenades, allowing you to blind and blight the back row over and over again. Blinds are some of the strongest tokens in the game, with the Plague Doctor being one of the most reliable at landing them. Especially in that back row where you're going to be dealing with some of the biggest damage dealers in the game. Upgraded, it'll smack down a double daze too, making her one of the best heroes for slowing down that heavy DPS back row while your frontliners remove the flirts up front. Disorienting Blast is also an amazing tool, allowing you to shuffle an enemy. Now, this does come at the cost of the shuffle being random, but the odds are generally in your favor that it will move them away from where they work best. It's also a great skill for disruption teams reliant on positioning. It can also rain down a nice stun, which when paired with the shuffle is a really nice way to point out a target and remove him from action, all while pulling them to where your damage dealers can handle them. And her last, and maybe one of her most useful support abilities, is Magnesium Rain. The burn here may kind of feel negligible, it's pretty low, but it can be amazing at tapping down low health enemies, or triggering death's door on problematic ones, especially when it's applied to the whole team. It also has the effect of removing corpses on the battlefield, which is an immensely useful ability. Not only is it good for negating the issues of enemies interacting with corpses and getting heals or strength or whatever else it is that they get, but it can also be used to pull backliners up front once the frontline enemies have been dealt with. A very, very good button to have in your back pocket. And so finally, let's talk about how to use the Plague Doctor as a mad woman of pure death and chaos. For a support hero, the Plague Doctor has some very heavy hitting abilities. Her incision, while doling out a decent bleed, has a respectable raw damage attached to it, and when using her search path, it can really hit like a truck. Yet where she really shines, of course, is in her ability to deal Blight to any rank. While the physical damage from both Noxious Blast and Plague Grenade are pretty low, they thrive on their ability to quickly lower the health of enemies. Her back row cleave is one of the strongest ways of dealing with irritating enemies that like to stick to the back and makes her especially good at landing hits through stealth. Now combine this innate ability to land damage over time with another teammate or two that can also land damage over time, and just watch in awe as Cause of Death translates that slow ticking damage into a single massive hit. Working in tandem with a Flagellin or a Bleed focused Hellion, and you can remove most of the boss's health in one hit with enough forethought. It's a really fun button to hit. So overall, the Plague Doctor is just a solid hero. One you'd be hard pressed to find a team she just didn't work in. Make sure to try all of her abilities and see what chaos you can manage. I'm sure you'll have fun playing her. So with that, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you like it, make sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series. I'll be covering all of the heroes at some point and do consider subscribing to the channel. It super duper helps. I'll catch you in the next video.